How's everybody doing today? Man, we got some good stuff for you guys today. First of all, in the background, there's lots of things going on out here. There's footballers out there, so you're hearing the footballers talking out there. We are in the field, we're in Eddie Ag Ground. Let me do so, so you can see. There's a lot of activity going on in the back of me here. I was just checking out the football while I was reading the word. You know, we gotta read the word. So we're reading the word a little bit. And also, at the same time, we're also just chilling out out here. Okay, so there's, let me see if I can explain what's happening, first of all. So here, we got this beautiful scenery here. Every Saturday, every Sunday, there are football clubs, footballs, or what we call soccer, what you Americans call soccer. It's a big thing out here, so all these kids from school, man, young ones, they be out here kicking football and doing stuff. So I was kind of checking it out while I was reading the word and stuff. It's really awesome. And then on this side, it's kind of dead. So if you do remember, uh, I was in this field a night and I shot a video. And so there's the main road across there. It's called the main road. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of far away, but it's the main road across there. And then if we move across here, I'd really love to show you guys how beautiful it is. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's warm out here. It's Caribbean, man. It's Caribbean's awesome. But if you go across here, you would also see there's another field. There's a bunch of fields. So there's some people here. I think they're doing cricket on this side, or is it football? I don't know what they're doing. Out here. All these people here watching. Yeah, but you got, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. I think it's cricket. It's a cricket field out here, so they're doing cricket on this side. And they do soccer on the other side. It's really dope. So, uh, I'll be out here. This place is beautiful, man. This, this is a beautiful country, man. See those trees, man? Take a look at that. It's beautiful out here. So, uh, it's kind of laid back, a little bit wild country. This is the field again. This is a cricket field. They, people are training. Cricket clubs. Not much people out here today. But on a Saturday and on a Sunday, man, folk be doing football and cricket. That's the thing out here. Then the carnival coming around the corner. We're gonna have all these fitness people doing all kinds of things. Morning, morning, morning. Yeah, man. Shooting a video. I shooting a video. So I just a video. I do YouTube. So I decided to let people see what Trinidad is like now. Yeah. What they got? Yes, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's a nice gentleman there. This other guy here, he's just doing a little exercise, doing his little thing. I don't know what's. He'd be happy, man. He'd be pumping his hands in the air and all that stuff. We got homeless people out here, too, man. Man, I feel for it because I used to be homeless once upon a time. But that's the Eddie Art ground right there. It's like empty right now. If you look in the, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bunch of people training on the other end of the field. It's a big field here. Uh, the other end of the field, there's some people training. So I just want to give you guys a little few. Of yeah, it's a third world country, but it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. I grew up here. I actually know this place quite well because I grew up here. Uh, I spent like 40 something of my years, oh, almost 40 years at least. I'll be 44 pretty soon. My mouth's a little bit dry, but yeah. And then again, it, 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 the beauty of the place is the colors, man. The place is colorful, but look at if, if you look at, for instance, I don't know if you can see it, but this is a beautiful pink, pink looking uh, bench. But it, man, talk about the paint peeled off of it. It's another ad bench here, and it's kind of dirty and stuff. That up because it's like the light and dark is kind of weird here. I can't really show you what I'm show you. Anyways, man, that's not what you guys can hear. You want to hear something about the slider cut, so I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about the slider cut first of all. I have some mics right there, and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about uh, as I walk across this field here, just for the sake of walking across it. I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about something I read from scripture, okay? So if you guys are cool with that. Here we go. <laughs> so first of all, with the Snyder Cut, I think you guys know about the ending that Zack Snyder commented on that on Vero. And he said that, uh, yeah, the, the, the league was watching up through a boom tube 
uh, something that was going on through a boom tube. So the ending of Justice League sort of kind of is sort of kind of like the ending that was going to be anyway. Okay. But of course, when we look at the positioning of the league and just various other variables, we realize it's still going to be different. It was going to be similar, but different in that clearly the Flash was with them. They were all together as a group watching up at this thing. Superman was leading the charge. And so it was it was a different sort of ball game. And of course, with Darkseid, of course, we saw that he was going to be in the storyboarding and that he was actually going to be in the story a lot more. We don't know if Darkseid had something to do with that boom tubing at some point in time. So the ending was going to be different to the ending that we saw. But the storyline, like I thought, it, the basic storyline I think was more or less more or less sort of like the same not the same but sort of like the same so that's it for the Snyder Cut stuff that I'm going to talk about now I'm going to talk to you guys about some other stuff and it's man it's it's you know I just showed you a lot of beauty all around us right and really to prove my point you see these huge humongous trees somebody planted them for sure Somebody planted these trees, they're strategically placed. But every single one of these beautiful trees that you're looking at right now, every single one of them is sustained. They don't have to go looking for food. You know what I mean? You know how we, uh, like, we prepare our own food, we cook our own food, you know, we, we have to get money to buy food and stuff? Not these trees. They suck the nutrients off from the ground. You know what I mean? The grass that grows right here. Nobody feeds this grass. Nobody waters this grass you see on this field. They get all their nutrients from the soil and from the air. Um, I want to show you guys some other things, man. And, and then I want to show you guys these things because I think they're practical. If you listen, you're not really going to hear them right now. But earlier on today, it's like 10 o'clock in the day. But earlier on today, there was a host of the birds here. So you can hear them. You can hear some of them. And they're up in trees and stuff and they come through and they eat their food and they move on whether it's they eat fruit from trees or whether they eat insects on the ground or whatever they're eating right i always thought man how do these animals know where to go and eat because they don't have they don't make their meals you understand what i'm saying they don't make their meals but they get food they get fed and then they move on and then I wanted to show you guys so you see these massive trees and stuff that people have planted but then there's other things that come along with that right and so for you to get a, a good perspective here's a bus there that's a public transportation that's the bus it's a maxi taxi going by right there instinct man my dude yeah that's instinct my dude and uh this guy go by here um instinct dude was just Calling me a reporter. I never thought of myself as a reporter, actually. That's, that's dope. Maybe I should start covering stuff. I don't know. But anyway, man. Just wanted to show you guys a little something. Man. I thought, this is just so beautiful. I was sitting down here reading. And then, g'day, g'day. And then, uh, I saw this. And it's so beautiful and yet so small. You can miss it. It's so dark too here. I may have to boost up the lighting or something for you guys to actually see it, but... Oh, man. I'm trying to catch this in the right light here. Okay. See this here? These little flowers. These little, little plants. I don't know if you can see it. It can be dark. I think I might see them. If I... It's so They're so small, but yet so well-formed and so cute and so small. I was thinking... Ain't nobody plant these plants here, okay? These seeds were carried by somebody's foot or something, or animals, but they ended up on the ground here, man. God takes care of these little things. I look at all the ants, some little ants moving around too. I think about how God takes care of these things, man. Now, I don't know if you guys saw what I just showed you. I hope so, the camera will show the details. It's beautiful, I mean, I look at this it's real, real small. See how big my hand is, right? Compared to me. And these plants have these little like teeth-like things. Like they, they probably kill insects and stuff too. And it's so crazy, man. How all 
marvelous life is here. I can see all kinds of ants and everything down here. Yeah, it's just amazing, man. And I think about that. I'm thinking, this is beautiful. And we miss it. We, we miss all this beautiful stuff. There's somebody really blasting an announcement. I don't know why. Yeah, but God just makes these beautiful things. And, hey, man, they're on their own. Sort of like, you no, know, he supplies the nutrients and stuff. That's what I'm saying. And so from that, I want to share with you something, man, from the scripture. Because there's, there's probably more of them. If I move, if I move around, I guess see more of them somewhere. Yeah, they're all here as well. Oh yes, yeah. so if you haven't seen them there, you probably see it here. Look at this one here. Let's open one a little bit more on the others. You step on them, some of them get crushed. And I was thinking about the, the other fact that, you know, God is so sick, man. You could cut a tree off, right? You could cut the tree down and it would re-sprout. Even if it was dying because it lacked water and stuff, all of a sudden it could sprout back and have life. And I'm like thinking about that all the time, you know, and uh, these are the dudes they're training in the background right there. So that's why you're hearing all that noise. Yeah, I thought about that. I, I, you know, that's what I actually read today. So I'm going to go across the road again to the other side. I'm actually going to read this stuff for you, you guys. Because um, I find it really cool and neat. And I just wanted to spend a little time with you guys. You know, you get to see my country a little bit. A little bit of my country, not, not a whole lot. This Here, this is the what's called the bus route, which I crossed uh, multiple times. And uh, there's a police car going by. And, uh, yeah, you know, I want to show you guys something. Yo, it almost knocked me down. Not really, but, yeah. Here's my brother, man. Making that route. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. Say God all the time. Yeah, we have some Christian people out here. Be happy. So I'm shooting this video here, man. For the glory of God, obviously. And some of you are atheists and that's alright, man. Don't get ticked off. <laughs> Yo. So I wanted to just read from scripture. Yo, Matthew, uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, I want to read for you from Matthew chapter 6. You don't need to see this, but hey, I'm, I'm going to show you. Matthew chapter 6 is what we're looking at, okay? This is chapter, this is chapter 6 right here, okay? And I'm going to read from verse 24. You don't need to see this, but hey. Eh, it's up to you, man. It says, No man can serve two masters, for either you'll hate one or love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and money, clearly. See, I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor yet for your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than meat or food, and the body more than raiment or clothes? Behold, the fowls of the air, look at them. They don't sow, neither do they reap, nor do they gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And that's what I'm just saying. I'm just telling you that, man, when you check it out, birds don't ever store up food. In fact, birds ain't got no plan. They have no indemnity plan. They got no savings plan. They got nothing stored up. They just go in the morning and they get what they got to get and they eat what they need to eat and they move on. Right? Um, you know what I'm saying? Behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor they gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much better than they are? You got some cool people walking by getting their exercise. Which one of you by taking thought can add one cubit to your stature? For the real. Which one of you guys, I mean, nowadays we can actually artificially add height to ourselves by using platform shoes. You know, we can get the bones extended and stretched and stuff. So, yeah, we could do it that way as well. But naturally speaking, if I think, and I think plenty, 
can I add height to my, my, my stature? No, I can't, right? And it goes on to say, this is from the Bible, by the way. This is a reading I was doing. Um, why do you take thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet, I say unto you, <coughs> even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. I mean, we bring roses and flowers to people because they're so beautiful, right? We, we do flowers all the time to people, right? They're beautiful. And guess what? This is the powerful thing. I mean, you can you can also grow them in a, in a rose garden or whatever. You can you can you know genetically enhance and, and so on. You can do that. So that is true. But the wildflower just shows you those little <coughs> beautiful little flowers. I have nothing to do with them. They just grew, right? God took care of them. He grew. And if you just look at natural things and how they don't do what we do. We worry about what we wear, these clothes here. We worry about how we're going to get that. We worry about how we look. We worry about how we'll get food. So we, a lot of us work to get food. A lot of us get social security to get food. We need money to get food, right? And we worry about that. We worry about, you know, how we're going to get clothes on our back. We worry about how we're going to get a roof over our heads, how we're going to pay the rent, how we pay the bills and all of that. But when you think about it, in the natural world, ain't nobody worrying about that. People just come through and they eat what they need to eat. Even if you look at stray dogs or whatever, they be just looking for what they need to get. They don't make the stuff. They don't prepare the stuff. We're the only set of people who worry about those things. And so God turned around and said, morning, morning, morning. And God turned around and <laughs> God, excuse me for a minute. Morning, sweetie. Morning, morning. What? You want to share too? Very nice. Very nice. Have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we have to, uh, 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 we worry about stuff that we shouldn't really be worrying about. Now, 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 now. That sounds crazy because if you think about it, I know a lot of you guys are out there worrying about different things and stuff. But if you are a child of God, man. You need to understand. I'm gonna read this again because that's the direction I'm gonna be heading in. You know, I have a place to lay my head. But if you think about what Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying something that he did. Jesus never worried about where he's gonna get his food from. Jesus didn't have a nine to five. Jesus didn't have an indemnity plan. Jesus didn't have savings. Jesus didn't have a house of his own. Jesus didn't have the things, cars and transport and all of that. He didn't have the luxuries. Even this phone. We have so many luxuries now that we've become a lot of decent Christians. For those of you who are Christians out there, we've become lazy. That's why we're not, we not trusting God for nothing because we are self-sufficient. So our faith is like this. And if our faith is like that, then we can't receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit like we should. And I say receive it because it's already given to us. We're just not apprehending it and we're not exercising it. Because we have so much luxuries. We have so many things. And we get occupied with so many things. So I wanted to get you guys' attention by talking about the Snyder Cut stuff. So that I could rope you into what really matters. Okay? Which is trusting in God. We talk a lot about trusting in God. There's a lot of Christians out there who say they trust in God. A lot of us. But do we really trust in God? Have we really started to really tap into that? No, we haven't. And if the natural world trusts in God and takes it for granted that God is supplying certain things to them and they're not spiritual like we are supposed to be, what for us as Christians? What for us? I showed you the beauty of this place. Some of it is maintained by humans, okay? But the beautiful thing about my country is it has a wild beauty to it. So humans don't fully take care of things and they don't fully maintain things. See, there's a bottle right there, right? There's a, a sort of wild beauty to it. So I could actually show you how God is taking care of the other stuff. And I love doing that because then I could show you that man didn't do that particularly. Man didn't put this, okay, man made to put this tree here, right? But he ain't maintaining this tree. I can tell you that for a fact. 
Okay, because that's just the way my country goes. All right, he don't maintain the drainage. If you look here, the drainage smells stinky. You see a, some garbage in here, but amongst the garbage, guess what's there? Moss and algae. Now, where did these things come from? How are they surviving? How are they living? How are they getting their food? How are they getting their nutrients? God, he's supplying it. I'm saying. And that's, that's the cool thing I get to show you guys. So if you trust God, and, and that's the thing. A lot of people think that God, the people who don't believe in God, they don't think God exists. But it's so, it's so obvious and so natural to believe that. Because what's sustaining these things? You can go into all your little methods and stuff. But when you look at it, when you look at it from the end of the day, that intricacy and just the way how these things exist and how they even come to be in certain areas and grow and thrive or don't you got to ask yourself if what the scripture is saying is true or not Sorry, i gotta wipe my lens there do we are we believing a cunningly devised fable or are we believe in the truth and i want you guys faith to get stronger those of you who are christians out there because jesus is absolutely real i know I called on his name a couple times. I see my mom die twice and Jesus brought her back. The third time she hasn't been brought back. Okay? She died. The third time. She came to she came back a bit and then she went. Okay? But the point is I seen Jesus bring back my dad who was dying on a toilet bowl. I seen him bring back my mom twice when she fell and then after when she had a second seizure, she was brought back. Okay, this third time when she had this choking and stuff and it looked like it may she was choking again Couldn't bring her back didn't bring her back this time. All right, and it's not a problem for me But what I'm saying to you guys is that at the end of the day You got to know that there is something else much more powerful than you and I and not only that but it actually controls everything that exists and That thing is Jesus. It's God I'm telling you, man, it's real. It's for real. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I know it's a 22 minute long video that I put up here on YouTube. But I wanted to show you guys where I live. And, you know, just the place a little bit. I don't want to show people's faces and stuff unless they give me permission. But it's beautiful weather, man. It's a beautiful country. And I wanted to show you guys. It's kind of partially cloudy, partially blue skies. Look at this tree here with these beautiful flowers on it. Mm. There's beauty all around, man. Go so straight back, you guys can only see it. I mean, this camera doesn't do it justice, man. So, yeah. It's a little walkway around the savannas and stuff. Yeah, man. Deuces to you guys. Have a great, great day.